Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy of praise, isn't he? Well, hallelujah. I suppose we probably should have had the video going for the last half hour, but that's all right. I guess it was just for us. Glory to God. And I'll, I won't take too much time because we're, we're going to do communion this morning and stuff, but I'll just kind of get this thing started, and I guess I will take a look at it further on Wednesday. But we're living at a time like we've never lived before where, and people can say, and, and people can say this, and it's justifiable. Well, we've been through this before, and we've been through that before, and people have seen this, and I, I've said it myself, and, and I, I get all that, and God, he, he most definitely works in cycles, you know, you know, the sun comes up, the sun goes down, sun goes up, the sun goes down, and thank God, everybody says, thank God that cycle continues and that process still continues to work you know uh, I, I don't know about you but I just got stunned because I looked outside and it's snowing yeah November 1st I always say if it snows before my birthday that it's usually a long winter okay back to but uh God, you know, he knows what he's doing. He knows how to do things. He's, he's going to have what he's going to have. And I know that's pretty general and, and we can say these kind of things. But God, God I mean, if he, can, if he can set every planet in its place and allow it to move and it doesn't, you know, there's no cables, there's no wires, there's no, you know, and it, and it functions the way he said it would then God has declared that there will be a family with his likeness, right? In in his image, after his likeness. And he will, yes, Steve said it, he will have it. And we are fortunate. Look, you could be anywhere this morning. Anywhere. Well, God gave opportunity for you to be here. Anywhere. Well, God gave us opportunity to hear His voice. Amen? Look, Yesterday, I love Proverbs 31, and I, I may not even get to what I really want to. I, I do want to say some things, but because before we meet again, uh, you know, things are going to change, right? But uh, there's a lot of churches. There are a lot of women in the land. That's what, that's, that's what, there are a lot of virgins in the land. Look, Jesus even said this. He upset the apple cart of his own folks. This is what he said. He said there were a lot of widows in Israel. He could have went to any one of them at any time. But he went to Zarephath. Could have went to anyone. And this is what he said about in Proverbs 31. He says, but thou art the fairest of them all. The principle and the concept is in the book of Esther, too. And what God's looking for, if we read the book of Revelation, is the people who love not their lives. Clean hands and a pure heart. They overcome what? Themselves. Everything. And they inherit God. We're so trained in the art of self that we don't even know if we want all of God. Because the truth of the matter is, what would I do with it? God never came to be my Santa Claus. 
And yet he said, he'll supply my every need. My every need. And the only thing that ever hinders him is me. The only thing. Because we let the five kings of our life dictate the things we hear, the things we see, things we touch, things we taste, the things we smell. I still say this, Corey. We need to stop eating junk food for the soul and entertainment for the flesh. I just heard where the Lord said, you know, I'm going to read this verse and then I'm going to go there, but you're going to have to give me a second. I'm going to have to use the internet. Sorry. I'm getting everybody all stirred up. I just saw a text here from my brother Mark. He says, God whispered in my ear. That's what I want, God to whisper in our ear. Why? God's talking to a people who will hear. Okay, personal hot spot. All right. So, look, if in Luke, don't go there, don't go there. Luke 51, it says, suppose ye, well, I like this verse, 49 says, I am come to send fire on the earth. Hallelujah. God's a God that answers by fire. God's not looking for a people on fire. God's looking for a people to be fire, right? He said, I have come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it's already kindled, right? There is, right? But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and I'm straightened to accomplish it. And then he says in verse 51, right? Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. Do you think that I came to bring peace? I tell you, nay, no. But rather, division. And you know the interesting thing about this, and I don't have time to go into Luke 11. I will do that on Wednesday night. But the interesting thing is this, and I'll just, I'll just give us the overview of it. Watch. A divided house cannot stand. And God is coming. He has been coming. He's coming. He's the ever coming one. His word is sharper than any two-edged sword. To do what? To divide. To divide asunder, it says. For what purpose? Number one, he's going to eliminate all neutrality in our lives. I love you, Jesus, on my terms. A divided house cannot stand. When his spirit shows up, decisions have to be made. Are you with me? This is what God is after. Now, you're going to have to give me a second. I have to go look for it. Okay, I found it already. I didn't realize I already. So if you, no, don't turn there. I'm just going to read Luke 21. I'm reading now the Amplified Classic. Okay? And, you know, the disciples had asked him about uh, several things. When's all these things going to happen? You know, and all these things. And and he was was literally describing about uh, when he was saying the destruction of Jerusalem, right? Everybody say this with me. The The destruction of Jerusalem was a picture of what God was going to do with the flesh man. That's a bottom line. This is why you have preachers that will say, well, when God did it, all these verses right here, they pertain just to that moment. This is a parallel of what happened when Babylon took over. Cycles. Nothing new under the sun. Are you with me? 
And he talks about how they would run. And then verse 25 of Luke 21, it says, And there will be signs in the sun and the moon and upon the earth. There will be distress, trouble, anguish of nations, bewilderment, perplexity, without resources, left wanting, embarrassed, in doubt, not knowing which way to turn at the roaring, the echo of the tossing sea. Anytime we talk about the sea, we're talking about the sea of what? Humanity. The only reason, you know, if we ever saw a hurricane and how a hurricane looks like what it does to the ocean and the waves, right? God gives us that illustration so that you and I can understand how most people live their lives, tossed to and fro. Are you with me? Okay, here we go. Men swooning away or expiring with fear and dread and apprehension and expectation of the things that are coming on the world for the very powers of heaven will be shaken and caused to totter. The writer of the Hebrews said, in repeating, he said, look, if God did that way back then, let me show you what he's going to do again. I will shake the heavens and the earth. Again, I will do this. The question is, have we noticed the shaking? And they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with great, transcendent, and overwhelming power in all His kingly glory, majesty, and splendor. God wants to show up and show out, prepare for purpose. The Son of Man coming in a cloud, in a people. That if you've seen us, you've seen Jesus, hey, I'm blowing a trumpet today that the sun is coming up over the horizon. And even though it may still look dark out, it all depends on what your perspective is. Well, I don't see anything. God, I've been praying this for a long time about myself and about you. God, open our eyes. We've been like Gehazi. Or I guess it was Gehazi. It definitely was Elisha's servant for sure that couldn't see. Beyond the end of his nose. Open our eyes, God, that we may see all that you've determined so that we may be the release of the one like the Son of Man coming forth. Amen. Now, when these things begin to occur, look up and lift up your heads. Set your mind on things above and not on the things of the earth. Because your redemption, deliverance, is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig trees and all the trees. Remember, we went through this. I don't have time for that. And when they put forth their buds and come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and perceive and know that summer is already near. Even so, when you see these things taking place, understand and know that the kingdom of God is at hand or it's near. Well, I thought the kingdom of God was here and it was already. It is, but it isn't. Like God is here, but... Are you with me? The problem isn't the kingdom. The problem isn't God. It never is. I didn't change the clock, so... If it feels, is it getting cool in here? <laughs> it says 55, so just remind me before we leave to change this. Commercial break. Okay, here we go. Don't lose thought now. Here we go. I want you to hear this. Truly, I tell you this. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not perish and pass away until all has taken place. Now, some folks will preach. Well, that he was talking to those people at that time. Yes, but watch this. The sky and the earth, the universe, the world will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Jerusalem got wiped out, got leveled, got leveled. And the reason it got leveled was because God was changing the order. 
He was turning the page. No longer could they worship the way they worshiped because God was changing the worship from on the outside to what flows out from the inside. Can't you see how holy I am? And it was all on the outside. Right? One of the problems that they had at that time were the priests and all the, and the Pharisees and all them, remember? They took and made the ribbon of blue bigger so everybody could see how heavenly they were. We have the same problem today. This is exactly why God puts you down in a little town to be instructed. We'd like to sell, send our kids to small schools, small classrooms, have you know, more personal touch right, from the teacher so that they can have better interaction with them. But the reality is when we go to church, we want to be lost in the sea because then it looks like it's God. Here we go. Did you hear this? The sky and the earth will pass away, but my words will not Pass away. That tells me he was talking to more than just that group. What he was really saying was this, watch, my words will be fulfilled. This could disappear, but I'm telling you, my words will be fulfilled. Here we go. Now watch this. You ready? Here's where I really wanted to get, folks. But take heed to yourselves and be on your guard. Lest your hearts be overburdened and depressed, weighed down. Watch this. With the giddiness and the headache and the nausea of self-indulgence. I wonder what I'm going to get for my birthday. I wonder what I'm going to get. What am I going to do with this money? What am I going to Self-indulgence. Drunkenness. What do people get drunk on? Themselves. And worldly worries and cares pertaining to this, pertaining to the business of this life, unless that day come upon you suddenly like a trap or a noose. Now, I love the next verse. Are you ready? This next verse will tell you that it wasn't just to Jerusalem in 70 AD. Everybody listen. For it will not, for it will come upon all who live upon the face of the entire earth. Now, 70 AD, I'm not trying to, I'm not, that wasn't the face of the whole earth. Even though like scholars will say, well, that was symbolic of the face of the whole earth. I get all that and I'll accept that and I have no problem. That's not, I, I'm not even disputing any of that. My thing is this, when God says he's going to deal with the whole earth, he's going to deal with humanity. Humanity. What's he going to deal with? Why they're so drunk? So giddy with the world? Weighed down? Remember the man when Jesus told the story? He said, look, what did the guy do? He, he had so many blessings of God, he did what? He went out and he tore down his barns and did, built what? Bigger barns, but he was no farther ahead. How about the rich man? Hey, I've, <laughs> what must I do? Go sell everything. Oh, God, I've got to give up my life. You know who are worse than rich people when it comes to money? And I'm not saying all. There's wannabes. They're always pursuing something they're not. And what drives that is greed. And what drives greed is a lack of relationship with God. And it's so subtle. 
in the Paul Harvey story, when you listen to it, if you listen to it, what's really interesting was, this is what he said. He said, it was about if I were the devil, right? But he said this, and he'll get the media, I'd get the media to fan the flames of all your passions. I'll teach you how to eat right. First, I'm going to teach you how to think. Eat the right food. Wear the right clothes. Do the right exercises. Everything, there's a list of all this. And not one. Whoa, whoa, what are you saying? Don't, aren't they? You missed the whole point. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's always been about God's spirit. Like George Mueller, we've lost the ability as a people to trust God with all of our heart and that he would supply our needs for everything. Yeah, the cares of this life. And this is why he comes to divide. It isn't to destroy. It's to change the heart. Anyone that would think that this message is negative, that he comes to divide, doesn't love Jesus. How do you know that? Because if I read the Bible, they wanted to kill him. Because all he said, I came to divide. You think I'm bringing peace. The kind of peace you want. And them lovable little kids come to me every Sunday and Wednesday they get a little mint from me, I tell them it costs them something. Don't I, Steve? I tell them it's going to cost you something. What? A kiss. Not money. I don't need money. God doesn't need money. Are you with me? What God is after is better than rubies. It's better than gold. It's more precious than silver. I want to know what it is, never, ever, to have to go back. Have to overcome. To rise above. Because you already live there. For it will come upon all who live upon the face of the entire earth. So here's, the, here's what he says. You ready? I'm going to end it right here. Watch. Everybody listen. Keep awake then. And watch at all times. Be discreet. Attentive. Ready. Praying that you may have the full strength and ability and be accounted worthy to escape all these things taken together that will take place and to stand in the presence of the Son of Man. There's something to escape. There really is. What are you trying to escape? I thought we weren't part of the rapture people. We're not. What are you trying to escape? What are you trying to get out of? Myself. Stand with his presence. To walk in his presence. In a full measure. I think it was pretty cool what the man said. He's a numbers man. Isn't that what he said? He said he's a numbers man. A numbers man. Accounts receivable, much is given. Accounts payable, much will be required. I loved what he said about, this is what he said, he says, this is when he was talking about the virus, he said, the virus, the virus, the virus, that's all people want to talk about, the virus, whether you're in the church, out of the church, virus, virus, COVID, COVID, virus, like he had something to do with it. 
And this is what he said. He said, the people are sick. They need a savior. They need a healer. They need a deliverer. It's all Israel was ever supposed to be. And God changed the natural Jew position to a true Jew, which is one that is circumcised of the heart. That God has cut away the flesh of our lives that we could become the full reality. Not a partial reality, the full reality of who He is. How can this God who created everything come and live inside of us in fullness? The real question is, do we want him? Do you really want him? I don't mean, oh yeah, I want him. No, no, no. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. It doesn't work that way. Who in the world would want a spouse? Yeah, when you're available. It doesn't work that way. It's not what God wants. Never has. What kind of parent would want children that always act and think they're smarter than them? Never. Because they understand the fundamental principle that if you obey your parents, there's great promise. This is what God's after. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's stand. I know it's short today. But we've been here the full length of time. We got our time in. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Seriously, I, I, I'm, I'm serious. God's talking to us. You know, I really want to talk about this, and I think it's important. You know, I'm going to read it while I'm here. Uh, you know, while you're standing, don't go anywhere. Uh, I'm going to read it. Hang on. No, let's see. Oh, Can I read some things that, look, before I ever saw the video of the, of the man when they asked him if he was voting for Trump. I literally, God started speaking into my ear about the election. Not on November 3rd. Okay? But the election in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Here we go. Wherefore, the rather brethren... Give diligence to make your calling, your invitation, and election. Everybody say this with me. Only if you mean it. I've been selected by God. To do His will and not mine. Everybody thinks this is an election about a president. And though it carries it, but the reality is, is God is in the midst. And this is about a people making their election sure. That if God can use a man like Donald Trump to do his bidding because the church has fallen asleep because they're drunk in the night, what could he do with a people who will turn their hearts toward him? 
I'm not going to give you any other sign but the sign of Jonah. That after Jonah overcame himself, he got a whole nation to repent. You know the thing that Paul Harvey said, one of the things that he said, if I were the devil, he said, this is what I would do. After the whole nations are doing their own thing, he said, I'd go after the apple Because there's never been a nation like the United States ever. You're arrogant, you're brash. No, that's God's statement. How do you know that? Why do people still come in here? If we're so bad, why do they still come here? Because they're being drawn by God. Every tongue, every nation. Do you know why we've had communism and socialism and totalitarianism and all these other isms for all these centuries? And then all of a sudden we have what we've had is because God was showing us contrast so that we wouldn't end up like them if we didn't chase God. Wherefore, the rather, rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. I love this word sure here because it literally means through the idea of being stable, firm, force, steadfast, sure. And I love it because it comes from a base root word that means make your election a walk. I couldn't make it up. I couldn't. I've been talking about the walk and boom, how do I get that out of that? Make your an election a walk. Your invitation, your election, a walk. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord. And Jesus Christ. Man, it doesn't get any better than that. God is in our midst. He's here. I'm serious when I say this. Do you really want him? Then chase him. Seriously. Because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, folks. Mark my words as sure as I sit here. Are you a prophet? Oh, I'm just going to burst the rock of humanity today. That's all I'm doing. If the church doesn't wake up, we have enough history to let us know we will just repeat. And a drought is coming. The problem is, is we don't believe it. Even if the Son of Man shows up in the clouds, hello clouds, a drought is still coming. How do you know that? Because they become the hail, the rain, the fire, the earthquake. They become everything that causes people to run to God. Because watch, there's people right here in this room right now won't run to God. They wouldn't even run to God if the worst, if the, like the sky fell on them right now. We need the sun. To come up over the horizon. To change the atmosphere, Corey. That there's no neutral ground of me and Jesus where it has to be all Christ. Right? The best thing next to what? Sliced bread. I want to preach them to mess it to I just do. Father, I thank you for your word and your life. And I pray, God, help me that we can help one another to become fitly framed together, pressed, filled, overflowing, that the life of Christ will become the all in all. And we get so hungry for you, God, that nothing else will matter. So I pray, God, as we gather, come on up, as we gather, you can turn it off, Corey.